In the last tutorial, we created macro number 25, which did three functions for us, programmable output 2, uh, input gain, and cross point gain. And we could very easily create another macro that would do just the opposite of that. And since we're still in Notepad, we can copy those commands and paste them in. Now what I'll do is I'll change this to macro number 26 and I'll change this to input control off and I'll make this one input control on. Now here I'll change the programmable output of number 2 to 0. I'll change the input gain of 2 to 0 and I'll change the cross point gain to negative 70 which will disable the cross point. So now very quickly we have a second macro that does just the opposite of what macro number 25 does. So now if we wanted to assign a button to run this one of the commands and another button to run the second of the macro, so macro 25 would be run by button 1, macro number 26 would be run by button 2, um, we could do that in code. And let me show you how that's derived. I'm going to connect to the Aspen control panel. And we'll connect via USB to a 1624. And we're going to go to the rear panel control. And we'll see that um, we are connected here via USB. And you also see the device number and the serial number and the version of the firmware as well as with the current preset that you're running, in case you didn't know that. So let's go to rear panel control. And right now button number one and button number two, they're not assigned to any particular functions. So if we go to the steps involved in this, we launch the control panel, we connect to the device, we navigate to rear panel control, we select the programmable input that we want, and then we select the function which would be run macro on close, which uh, by the way happens to be the 18th item down here, and I'll tell you why that's important in a minute. We select that, and once we select run macro on close, then we select the macro number that we want to run. Uh, in our case, it would be 25. And we hit enter, and it shows input to control. That's how we would do it normally. Well, what if we want to do this via code? Well, let me show you how that works. I'm going to change the function back to none. And if we go to the help, Go to Aspen Reference, and we go to Aspen Control, and we select the 1624, and we go to Programmable I.O. You'll notice something that I have in here, one of the commands, is Programmable Input Definition. This is where we can define what the programmable input can do, much like we select the programmable input one here, and then select the function and then select the macro. Well, we can define that here in a line of code. Program input definition, I selected that so it shows me all of the help for that. And I get a, some information as to um, you know what it does, the uh, program input definition, and all of the functions. Now notice these functions that we have available to us happen to be the same functions that are in this drop-down menu list here. That's how I knew that run macro on close was number 18, which is right here, run macro on close. So to set up a command, you get examples in the help of how you would do that. It shows what the different functions do. And then down here at the bottom, you get information as to how to set up the various commands. So we want to run a macro on close. So to define that, what we would do is we'd come back to our text file and we would set up two buttons. Let's say the programmable input definition of button number one, we want it to run macro number 25. So we say equals open curly braces and remember 18 is the command we want to use from the drop down menu which is run macro on close. Which macro do we want to use? macro number 25. That's the one we want to call when this button is pushed. So now in one line of code, 
this line of code right here, defining what programmable input number one is going to do, run a macro and close number 25, is the equivalent of what we did here by selecting number one, selecting run macro and close, and then selecting the macro number 25. We have done all of those things in just one simple line of code. And I'm going to leave this not used because the code's going to do it for us in a minute. So we can come back here now. And to do the other button, button number two, we can copy that and paste and just change this to button number two and change this to macro number 26. Now let's save this file. And we want to now play back this file into our Aspen box. Well, notice that you also have in the full control panel the command terminal. You can get to it by clicking on Control T as we discussed earlier, or you can simply click on the tab. And when you click on the tab, under File, Playback becomes active. Under any other tab setting, you'll notice that playback is grayed out. However, in Command Terminal, we can now play back a file. So if I go to File Playback, and I now select Test Commands, and I click Open, you'll notice here comes all of the macro files and also the definitions of the buttons. So let's have a look now. If we go to Rear Panel Control, it's automatically set up for us. Button number one is set up to run a macro and close. Macro number 25. Button number two is automatically set up to run a macro and close. Number 26. So we are set. And if we were to go to the macro editor, we would notice if you go to device, recall from device memory, and we look at macro number 25, we now have our new name, input two control on. If we click OK, it has all our commands. And if we look at macro number 26, we click OK, we have all of the commands. Now we can do absolutely everything by code, including defining buttons. So in the next section, we'll learn how to make a toggle button instead of using two buttons and two macros.